What's up, everybody? Welcome to Journeyman here with DraftKings, Metal Lark Media. We're going to give you a little peek behind the curtain because this is, I don't know if this is technically week two or three. Carl, is it two or three? It's week two, technically, and we're figuring this all out. This is what the beauty of Journeyman is, is that there is no stability when you bounce <laughs> around the way that Journeyman does because that was my professional career. And I'm joined today by... How do I describe, well, both things. I got to describe our relationships. I'm going to say you're my homegirl, Sydney Colson, uh, professional basketball player in the WNBA. But how do I give an intro for you? Like, how do you like to be introduced? Is it just basketball player? Is it comedian? You tell me. I think both. Yeah, yeah, I think both, man. I think I've, I've grown to accept that it's both because I felt like I had to be, like, doing something that a um, lot of people could see mm. to be considered a comedian. Mm. But I'm like, I guess... I accept the, that yeah. label now. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think Journey Woman, I've been... There it is. ...places in the league, too, so... How many teams have you played for? Five. Five teams. Yeah, you're, you're a Journey Woman, for sure. Uh, mm -hmm. so, so, okay, comedian, professional basketball player, the most ridiculous professional athlete. Like, you talk about stupid, and I don't mean stupid in, like, a bad way. I mean, like, no home <laughs> training, like, needs to to get sit, she needs suspended every, like, I swear to God, I don't get how you get away with some of the stuff you post on social media, but it has me so weak. See, I'm not, I'm not joking. I'd be at home. You want to talk. LOL. I, yes. I, cause I, I appreciate good slap stickery. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think I'm like, that's, Yo, why, we click. that's why we click. Cause I'm like, she's a big <laughs> exactly. All right. So we're here on journeyman slash journey woman. Now the Sydney's on the show, but it's, yeah. I'm moving from L.A. to Miami, like literally last night. I got off the plane four hours ago, and as yeah. of like just now, I am a Miami resident. So the show That's is going to continue to evolve. It's going to continue to grow. We're going to hit everything as, as much as we can. The things that make sense to us here, Sid, and I, I can't wait to get your perspective on this first topic because we're going to jump into Anthony Davis. Now, recently, the Nuggets beat the Los Angeles Lakers in game one, and we'll get to that, a little bit of that. But I want to talk about the injury that Anthony Davis got after game five because he got hit in the face, all right? And yeah. I'm a big-time Laker fan. My son is a big-time Laker fan. I'm a big Braun fan. I was a big Kobe fan. So I'm, I'm, in, I'm invested in the Lakers. Yeah. Now, I'm a casual. I'll be honest with you. Don't try, don't try <laughs> to talk to me about the high pick post three triangle bulls. I don't know none of that, okay? I know casual. basketball like, like everybody else. So yeah. when he got hurt, and then I'm like, dang, he's hurt. And, you know, obviously that's a big part of the Lakers squad and our ability to win the championship. But he's going out on a wheelchair, and I thought that was a little much. I'm going to be honest with you, Sid. I don't want to be that guy. But I did think it was a little much. I seen Chuck and Shaq laughing. They were making jokes. Stephen A. Smith made some comments. I think AD unfollowed him on Twitter. So yeah. I just, I mean, you're a professional basketball player. So I'm going to give the floor to you. What was your thoughts on AD's injury situation after game five? Uh, it's, it's hilarious to like hear from non-basketball players, specifically football players, <laughs> about <laughs> concussions. <laughs> For y'all, I'm sure, you know, like the level of like toughness that you got to have to play football is like, it's next level. You got to be a little crazy. It's astronomical. Yeah. And so, granted, I mean, like, you will look at that and feel like, what? what? <laughs> like, a lot of people will look at that. Even, like, older players, like, from Shaq and Charles era, like, their level of toughness, you look at something like that and you're like, no. But, like, in reality, it could just take one hit to the right spot. To one be Okay. To be, to be concussed, but the funny thing about it, like, it's wild because, you know, like, me, like, I, I border the line a lot of times with, like, all right, should you make that joke? Should you say that? But, like, I mean, comedians do that. Like, you yeah, you gotta toe the line or you cross it. it a lot of the time. So, when I looked at that, when, like, when I was seeing the remarks and, like, the comments on Twitter, it's hard to not laugh at some stuff, even uh -huh. if it is serious. But it's kind of like if you're at a funeral and somebody gets up to, like, <laughs> talk about the dead person they're talking about them and it might be right but it's like dog it's like not the time though right now like i know you laugh at funerals i i know <laughs> you are the person that 
<laughs> your family probably can't stand you because they like you got to put you in a certain section of the church. Yeah, I'm like people got to stop dying. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, all right. So I, I so you so you, when you saw the Anthony Davis injury, you were like, yeah, that looks. Now look, I got a lot of concussions. To your point about football players, I probably had at least six concussions in my professional. That's not including college and beyond. My professional <laughs> football career. And, and I'm that's talk- probably clouding your judgment. And that's. <laughs> And your vision. <laughs> so, yes, it's probably clouded my judgment and my vision. And again, like I said, I, I there's been times where I don't remember anything. So if I see it hit to the face, yeah, I'm going to be like, okay. No. And I never went out on a wheelchair. Now, I might not know what day of the week it was or how I got to where I was at, but I walked off. So That part made it funny. <laughs> yeah, that, that part made it funny. So let's play this clip. I think we have a clip of... Charles and Shaq of the incident, and I want to get to a, a little deeper into this conversation. But let's let's show the clip first. I think I do too. But what are you laughing about? You know what they're laughing. I'm about. laughing at Chuck. Girl. <laughs> Shaq, 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 I know what they're laughing at. Shaq, you understand? Shaq is over there crumbling up paper. That's why I was laughing. <laughs> that's not. That's I'm not laughing. what I'm going. I'm laughing at Chuck. Girl. Come on, tell the truth. I'm they understand. Come on, man. No. Stop it, man. Stop it. <laughs> Ernie, we don't let us go there. Because if we go there, it'll never stop. Laughing. It'll never stop. Ernie, we need to go to that next game quickly. <laughs> no, we don't. Oh, man. I'm laughing at Chuck. Well, tell me, give me your takeaway from the game, oh. Chuckster. Uh, there's not, no shocker. The Lakers were, you know, they were kind of engaged. But when you give up 100, uh, when you give up 70 points in the first half, you're not <laughs> kidding. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm sitting, fixing my seat. <laughs> I'm fixing it. My seat. What is Kenny doing? I'm fixing my seat. <laughs> what? I did not do that. You're fixing your seat. I did not do that. <laughs> it's impossible. Man, guys, come on now. Now, I didn't laugh at AD's injury. I didn't think it was funny at all. But I'm not going to lie. I laughed at them laughing. Because it's like <laughs> one of them things where someone else in the room is laughing. You can't help but laugh. And I'm like, these guys are idiots, right? So you're telling me I'm tripping. For thinking it's funny that they thought it was funny, Sid. Final verdict, right? Ha- right now. No. Okay. Thank God. All right. I can see like both ways. Okay. All right. That's we'll we'll take that. All right. Let's transition yeah. into the basketball. Did you see the Lakers in the Nuggets game last night? Yeah. Yeah. What are your thoughts? Um, I I had a I mean I just had a feeling like Denver wasn't gonna lose like game one on their home court, but I think they probably should be a little worried because Jokic and Murray had really good games. So did uh, Caldwell Polk. Mm-hmm. It was a six-point game at the end of the day. I don't think like the Lakers just played great. You know, they yeah. had a really good game. I, Reeves had some big shots, but I don't know. I think the Lakers might take the series, though. You know, I, I you think the Lakers going to take the series? I think they might. I'm going to be honest. I, I got to re- respect. And if they don't, the Nuggets will. I tweeted mm. that yesterday. People were pissed. Like, <laughs> uh-uh. <laughs> Literally, I'll... All right, yeah. If the Lakers don't win, the Nuggets will take the series. No, I like that analysis. Um, so, I, I'm not going to lie. I got to apologize to to Joker. Because, you know, that meme from uh, Shaq, I wasn't familiar with your game. Like I said, I'm a oh, casual. Yeah. I don't know. I, will, I was a part of the, you know, Pan-African brigade, brigade saying, like, yo... <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I, I fell into the hype of them acting like Jokic was only getting them MVPs because of, oh, he's a white player. Like, I, I didn't know. I'm like, oh, is that what's going on? Because I'm a casual. I don't know. If NBA players are saying it, Sid, if yeah, professionals yeah, yeah. Are, I believe it. I watched the game. I'm like, oh, y'all was tripping. This yeah. dude, he's better than everybody. What do you think? I think, I, I think, I think that he's really, really good. I think he's really good. I think Embiid. I think Embiid deserved the MVP okay. this year, though. and I think um, he has a crazy skill set. Like I love his game. I love how you keep saying you're a casual though. Like like you embrace it. <laughs> I am. I am a casual. He rose shame because I, I seen I seen a, I seen a clip of uh, Shumpert on his podcast talking about like Braun and they were running this play over and over again, and he's like. Yo, we were doing a, a a high pitch post off it, and it was it, it it dawned on me at that moment. I'm like, I have no idea what the hell he's talking about, <laughs> and 
So we're met because with football, like everyone has these opinions, and I have to sit there and I gotta act like we're having an intelligent conversation about like football and. But yeah. I, in my mind, I know I'm like, yo, you don't know what the hell you're well, talking about. You just you literally just watch this on TV, correct. and I gotta That's act me. like, yeah, yeah, I gotta act like we both are equal in our opinions or in like our knowledge base. And it was at that moment I realized I'm like, okay, I'm literally just a fan, which is a good thing. I don't, I embrace it. Yeah. So you know. I'm a casual, I, but Joker is legit, and he. I was like, yo, he's, he he's, he's, he's nice. He's like that. He's gonna be a scary dude to kind of beat. But I think Hachimura did well on him late in the game, and I feel like the Lakers kind of yeah. figured something out. And also, his That's nickname not. is Black Samurai, and I thought that was racist, but then I found out that he actually named himself that, so it was all good <laughs> after that. So it's fine. So it's fine. It's all right. It's fine. I re I refuse no, to use it. I like him. I like him. I was thinking the same thing. Like I think they they're gonna keep him on. Jokic for a lot of the series and have AD be the person like rotating for help. All right. Foul so, no trouble. So me and you are in agreement that the Lakers are going to win the series. We're going to come back to this. And if we're yeah. wrong. Just edit it. We'll Give just edit, edit it. To, what say? You said the, the nugget. So we'll just edit the clip. That's what I'm about to say. Yeah. I'm going to say it right now though, real quick. So that it yeah, can be like, it. cool. Make sure no, we I got think it. The nuggets, I think the nuggets will win it. <laughs>
That's a great one. But I think he will be in the dog because they need comedic relief. You know what? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like we need someone to well, laugh at. Yeah. Will you will he agree to it though? Dylan Brooks? Will he get it from China? Like we'll... <laughs> <laughs> Man. <laughs> well, I don't know how they'll be able to schedule the production. That's a good point. <laughs> yeah, but, different. So so do you think so is Dylan Brooks LeBron's Isaiah Thomas? Like no way. Come well, I mean, on not now. no, not in terms of stature, but definitely in terms of what you're talking. In terms of role on the, on the on, in the documentary, the way Isaiah, who one of the greatest players of all time, but he turned yeah. into a punchline basically, right? He, he turned did. into right. some some we laughed at. I yeah. think the same thing will probably happen. Maybe not just Dylan Brooks. There are a lot of that. Paul Pierce. Yeah, well, yeah. Paul See, Pierce might be more the Isaiah Thomas than yeah. Dylan Brooks. Yeah, but I don't. But I don't know. If Paul has <laughs> enough moments. Where like he was just embarrassed by LeBron, like Paul held his own, you know. Yeah. So then again, I guess no, that's, that's valid. But I guess like Isaiah Thomas, like yeah, you can't just reduce him to that one moment because he was a great player. Yeah. So you got to still have somebody that battled with you LeBron. Gotta, I, I, this is a good question. Who's the person who's like, yo, we're just gonna erase him from from history? Like they're not even gonna mention it. Skip Bayless is one for sure. He's not making a oh duck. Oh my gosh. He's not. He's not getting the invite to, but, to comment. No, they're not. Not in the invite, but they they might use clips again because they'll have him and yeah. Shannon probably. I don't know because LeBron has he has not acknowledged Skip a single time in twenty years, which is crazy is to think about. I love so that. I love the thought of him doing a last dance talk and acting like his his takes, which are the loudest anti LeBron takes, don't even exist. Yeah. That's how you like, erase somebody right. from history. Never heard of the dude. <laughs> like, I love that. Not How sure. embarrassing. If you spend so much time talking about somebody and they never acknowledge you, kind of like you, I mean. Like, <laughs> yeah, man. I'm going to tell you one thing. I ain't embarrassed on the 1st and the 15th. Hey, tell him. Tell him. <laughs> and she's still clear. clear. <laughs> uh, who else? I think uh, Stack, my dog Stack might be on his road to not being in the LeBron doc. Really? Yeah, I think he's he said some things recently, podcast, people letting LeBron score. And, you know, sometimes it, it don't, I, you know, I, I don't want to make... I'm a big Braun fan, lifetime Braun fan. I'll be honest with it. I'm biased, uh, a lot of bias from my perspective. But I feel like those there's some people that do try to make, you know, headlines or it does seem like it's a little vendetta. And you're not looking at it objectively. Like, if you hate on Braun at this stage, I don't want you, I, I tweeted this. I don't want you in my life. I want to block you <laughs> on social media. I don't want you a part of anything I'm a part of because your energy isn't right for my spirit and where I want to go in life. You feel me, Sid? I really do. That really resonated with me, Hawk. Yes. You cut, you cut off. Because oh. to be hating on LeBron at this point, it's like people are going to... It would be like if Jordan was at this point and you were just finding reasons to like talk down on the dude. But it's like, just appreciate the greatness that you're experiencing. Like You're not going to see this from another player in a very long time. Not yeah. like this kind of career and doing this what, 18 years, whatever, years into their career. Like, you're not going to see Hashtag this. year 20. Hashtag year 20, dude. That's crazy. Strive for greatness. Yo, I played basketball four weeks ago now. Um, and I take a break. So I hoop every once in a while, but I hooped. And I tried to hoop twice in three days. This is not a nah. lot. I pulled my hamstring. Nah, bro. Bending over. Like, at the butt. Well, like, well, it popped. Like, welcome. it was... Like, well, at the butt. Uh, like, the well, high joint. That's like the... I, I, I can't old bend man down ass injury, and man. I broke my <laughs> hand and don't know where I broke it. So my hand is still broke right now. Four weeks later, you don't know where. I don't know when it happened. When it, so I, I broke you. my hand and pulled my hamstring by the butt at 37. And I'm like, LeBron is really still out there hooping. First of all, the hamstring injury that you're describing that is a very old man injury. You <sighs> might you might want to start yeah. lying to people and just say I rolled my ankle. I That's wasn't why even I'm running, like, fam. I was <laughs> bending down for a ball. <laughs> You that know, thing popped on me. I tore my ulnar collateral. Down for a ball hawk? Yeah. I don't think you want. I don't think you want to say that like that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you, Sid. I appreciate you being on the show and, and helping me get my get Where's my Cam vocabulary Mace? right. <laughs> Where's Cam and Mason? You need them. Um, yeah, I tore my ulnar collateral ligament playing in the charity soccer game, and it was like, "What happened? The ball hit you in the head?" What? I was like, "No, I was jogging lightly up one direction, and then." Play change direction. So I turned around. I started jogging lightly the other way, and my body was like, "Whoa, Whoa. we changing directions now? Is that what we doing?" And I just fell like a tree. I can brand went, new, man. man. <laughs> exactly. That's that's what my body said, man. That's that's old man stuff, man. Like, yeah. I learned that. I think I learned on that day. Look, I woke up this morning. I felt good. 
why would I go do something that's going to make me not feel good later? That's a good point. And I haven't missed it one bit. You know Ever what? since then, I was like, yeah, I don't need to do this. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to find my rhythm post-retirement, being the, the old guy. It's a new world for me. I'm not used to not being able to to bend down. Sid, That's you, a new thing. Sid, you're young. You don't know about this. The elliptical well, is your I friend. I feel you, though. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm getting there. Like, I used to no. just get there and, like, not warm up and do stuff. I'm like, I've warmed up about 20 minutes now. 20 minutes. You got icy hot. You got it. Like, when I retired, I was doing... Hot tub, cold, cold tub, dog, uh, yeah. icy hot, <laughs> stretch, band. It took me. I had to leave meetings early. Everybody else was in meetings that they had before practice. I had to leave early to start my pre-practice just, wow. routine just to make it through practice. So hey. the pre-practice cold tub, pre-practice. <laughs> Damn, <I ain't> contrast, <laughs> man. Gotta, that's next level. That's why we got to give respect to Braun. All right. So who needs? Who is spot? Who spot in the LeBron Last Dance doc? Is secured, like it is. He wait. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> D Wade in there, cemented. Nothing yeah. you could do to get no D Wade out of there. Who else? Rich Paul. Rich Paul, of course, of yeah. course. Mav is Mav, obviously in there. Yeah. They're the producers of it. They're all EPs. Yeah. I'll give you one. Tristan Thompson is in there. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's in there. Channing Fry. Channing Fry. Yep. Richard Jefferson. One I'm telling them. you. Both of them. Both of them in? And Kevin Love. They're going to be sitting all three of yep. them together cracking jokes. So that's right. the, that's the little crew right there. Uh, who else, man? I'm trying to think who. That who, whole Cavs team is going to be in. J.R. Smith is going to be in. Who unexpected? J.R. Smith. Who unexpected is going to be in it? Because it's easy to go with the yep. those, those ones are easy. But like unexpected. Like, oh, I didn't know he'd be in it. You know what I'm thinking? Booby Gibson. Booby Gibson Booby is Gibson not in it, bro. Yeah. Hey, he's from Houston. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Booby's yeah. gonna make that it. That don't got nothing to do with getting into the LeBron docs here. Dude, they won 120. Houston, <laughs> 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 just just a like, yeah, now hey. we coming down. To... Nah, I, I, like <laughs> Booby Gibson, I don't feel like no, he's getting in it. He getting in it. They gotta talk about that first Cleveland thing. Who are they gonna talk to? Is it Drew Nasogaskas? They're not talking to him. Nah, uh, Verjao. Oh, they, yeah, Andy. Andy's a guy though. But Booby, Booby's, Booby's good on camera. That's why. Like, he is. You, you, need, you need someone who's going to bring a spark to it. You know? I, well, all right. I, I, for one, can't wait for the doc. Uh, we were talking about Le, Le, uh, Jordan's last dance doc. See, what was your favorite moments from the Jordan last dance doc? Because that was an epic. I mean, at that time in history, we were in the pandemic. We had nothing to watch. They, yeah. like, hurried up and put it out. And it was, like, that was, like, the first appointment viewing outside of, like, live sports that I felt like we had in a while. So we were all locked in. What was your favorite moment? I think um, that security guard that looked like <laughs> Bob from Martin. <laughs> Bob from accounting. Yeah, the one that did the shrug. Like, yep. that killed me because, like, the gambling, for one, <laughs> Jordan has said in the doc, like, remember he had his glasses on in the press conference? It was like, my wife said I had a gambling problem. Something like that. <laughs> it's like, it's sus that you had the glasses on. At that it. time. He was, and then you were gambling in this clip. It was just wild. Like, was, that's probably my favorite. And then the Dennis Rodman stuff. Dennis Rodman, absolutely my favorite. That you reenacted. It was sick when you did it. it <laughs> I sick. appreciate that. That was... I. My family was embarrassed by me after I put that up. <laughs> for sure. Did you do that a was my introduction to you. Oh, you gotta see, You haven't seen my... I haven't, I haven't right. seen it, no. So, Sid, that was your introduction. That's like my most famous thing I've ever done on the internet is I did the impression of Dennis Rodman in the Michael Jordan Last Dance Dog, and it went crazy viral. I had no idea it was going to do that, too. It took me, like, maybe an hour. So that thing had, like, a million views immediately. I said, I need to know this, man. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it was next-level buffoonery. But that's the cool thing about the doc is, like, it actually did spin, like, it's spawned two movies now. Because there is yeah. the, the Rodman 48 Hours yeah. in Vegas coming out. And then there was Air, mm -hmm. which I have an interesting take on Air. Have you guys seen Air? I have seen Air. Yeah. Sydney, yeah. You haven't, Sid? I'm going to ruin it for you because we spoil the alert he here. He gets his own shoe. Yeah. So <laughs> the end of it, <laughs> Michael Jordan ends up being the star. I don't know. Thank you, Damn. dude. I, spoiler, I mean, alert. spoiler alert. We'll put the alert on the on the post production so people don't get. Uh, but it is it, it's, it's kind of a dumb movie. It's no, it's not a dumb. No, movie. it's a commercial. It's kind of a dumb movie. It's not a dumb mean. movie. It's 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 really funny, dude. All right. It's really funny. It's well acted, well written. It's but at the acting. end of the day, it's a commercial. It's just like the Last Dance was a commercial. It's not a documentary. It's a commercial. 
great I am, right? So, all right, let me explain to you what happens in the movie, Sid, real quick. Yeah. And you know this. It's not, this is the, that's the thing about it. There is no twists. There is no turns. Yeah. It's great yeah. acting. It's, it's, it's written incredibly. Hold it, was, on. it would look beautiful. It, it, the equivalent would be this. Somebody does a movie on Dan Gilbert, owner of the Cavs, and their general manager in 2014. I don't know who that was. Somebody look that up for me if you can. And the movie David opens Gilbert. up, and they're like, we have to bring the Cavs a championship, but we don't know how to do it. And they're in the think tank, and they're like, man, and they're watching tape we on don't all know. These guys and like, one of the Gordon scouts Hayward's is at home. Available. They're like, Gordon Hayward? I don't know. <laughs> and then the scout is at home, and he comes in, and he slams a videotape, videotape for the thing back then, but still, he slams a videotape on the table. What's that? And he says, I got it. What is it? He said, it's a player in Miami. LeBron James. They're like, are you crazy? We don't, we Wait, can't LeBron get him. LeBron James, there's no way. And then the movie ends with LeBron James coming back and everybody applauds the scout. Yeah, like Dan you did Gilbert. It. You saw it. They're like, man, these guys are revolutionary. And it's like, yeah, no, yeah. Sh you don't <laughs> say. That's what air is. It's like, but like, there's it's applauding a bunch of people who did it. Win six championships, but, six rings, revolutionize revolutionize basketball, and do all the all the work. But it wasn't like the look. The story of air wasn't about like is Michael Jordan going to be great because they knew he was going to be great. It was do we blow our entire budget on one guy who wants to go to Adidas? That's I mean that's really the the obstacles they overcame. It wasn't like I don't know how good he is. It was. You want to give the entire yeah. budget to one guy, which was unheard of, particularly for a small company. Man, stop hating on air. Air was I'm a not good hating, movie, man. I'm just saying. It's a I, commercial. I'm just saying, like, with LeBron, it's like, man, do we blow our whole free agency on LeBron? I don't yeah. know. <laughs> There's other players available. Is this crazy? Do we trade Andrew Wiggins? We just drafted him. Are you nuts? You don't trade a first overall pick? You know, it's like kind of that. It's, it was a good movie. I was just like, you know. I'm going to text you when I watch it. I'm going I'm to see who I agree with. Thank you. That's, that's all I'm looking for. All right, last series the Lakers played, they beat the Golden State Warriors. Um, a lot was said about this Golden State Warriors team, kind of where they are. Is obviously the inner team dynamics between Draymond, Jordan Poole, Steph Curry of where they are, all these things. And it, it, it was a question on social media, um, which is where I get all my basketball news as a casual basketball fan, uh, about Draymond doing his podcast during the season. <laughs> and is that a distraction? I feel like I have a take that I'm still kind of crafting in my head. But I'll, Sydney, for you first, as a professional basketball I think it's a distraction for Draymond to be doing his podcast while the season is going on. And I want to hear if you're a hypocrite because you are probably the last person that I should be asking this question to, but I'm going to let you answer anyway. Go ahead. Shoot. As a person who doesn't play a lot, it would be very <laughs> different for me <laughs> to be having a podcast versus somebody who starts or plays like heavy minutes for a team. Like it's, it's like, and I would, and even like, I still wouldn't do it. Even if I didn't play a single minute, I wouldn't do it during the season. It's wild to see him doing this, like, <laughs> post game. What? First of all, shout out to Andre Iguodala, Point Forward Podcast, Metal Arc Property, who, there you who go. also active player doing podcasts oh, yeah. in the middle. So, <laughs> um, I think to me, it's not that he pods. I don't care that he pods. Okay. I care that he gives away if not state secrets but just things that you don't want to give away like do you think it's helped other teams when they play no them? it's not even help like oh draymond said they're gonna try trapping us uh you know and what it's not that it's mm -hmm. stuff like when he talked about S steph's mentality when it comes to lebron like mm -hmm. i was like don't say that out loud man like just you guys know podcasts like, no you start vomiting no, i life. know <laughs> Field. That's when you got someone behind the glasses. We'll say we are gonna mark that one right there, man. You can't say that stuff because yeah. in an active series, like it's one thing to say it; it's another thing to say it actively in the middle of series because you don't know what the mentality is over there. They might pretend to be confident, or whatever, but you might have just given them, oh, we in their heads or whatever. So yeah. I don't, 
I, like, I wish he wasn't so revelatory. I know that's what's going to make him great at this mm-hmm. when he's done playing. But it's like, bro, you don't have to be that great right now. You can be, like, just yeah. good and then yeah. kick it up into high gear when you're eliminated, talk about other teams, or when you're done playing altogether. Um, I don't think – would I rather him be podcasting or hitting the streets? I'd rather him be podcast. Why does it got to be the only two options? Because <laughs> idle time, why, why idle, got, idle time is the devil's play things or, or whatever. Or John Moran. You ain't gotta, there's a lot of in between <laughs> you could be doing there. I don't know. I, like, I think people make a big deal out of athletes in general doing anything that they, they perceive to be not their craft. Yep. And yep. like I know, I mean, all you guys are both pro athletes, so you know it. But as someone who's worked in, in the space for a long time, there's a lot of downtime. People don't understand that. Like, even the hardest, crazy, maniacal workers, there's a lot of time when you ain't got shit to do. So yeah. it's like, if uh, that's why a lot of guys will go into creative spaces like music or, you know, or podcasting or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. It's all kind of stuff that's, um, I don't know. It, <laughs> it's, it's all, it's all like fairly harmless, right? Right. In comparison yeah. to what could be happening. With what a lot of guys do with their with their idle time, which is hitting the streets, and not, I don't know, yeah, not in a okay, John Morant okay. way, but like a hitting yeah. the streets, you know, just hit, hitting the streets. Well, I, so you guys are okay with him podcasting? You just don't like the content that he said. You do I sketches. Think the, I think the oh, timing. I just think the timing is what the timing is wild, and what he's saying. I agree with him. Mean like it's what you're saying. Like just wait until later, because even next year, Steph Curry probably. I mean, he's still gonna be playing. I don't want LeBron knowing like what I think about our matchup. So yeah. it's just like save some of that stuff, but also I just like envisioning him setting up stuff in the locker room. You like know that. why I know so much about the Las Vegas? <laughs> you got you, hold on, you got you got Draymond like before Kerr walks in. <laughs> hold on, y'all, hold on, check, 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 check. All right, all right here we go. <laughs> but yeah, you know this 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 brought to you by Manscaped. <laughs> uh, <laughs> here in this locker room, locker room takes brought to you by Manscaped. Uh, I I know everything I know about the inner workings of the Las Vegas Aces because of Sydney Colson. She <laughs> does content literally in the locker room, places she's not supposed to, on the bus, every situation, in the game. She'll be doing funny stuff when she gets in the game. So to hear her say that Draymond Green's podcast is a distraction is wild hypocritical. <laughs> I'm a hypocrite. Okay. <laughs> All right. yeah, that's, we got to the bottom of it. You know what? I think Draymond, I think once you get the amount of gray hairs that Gray- Draymond has, if you are any active professional athlete and you have that amount of gray hairs, you can do what you want. And I have that amount. They're, they're just colored right now, but yeah. I have See? Of- then then you're good. And the same with Draymond, because you're at that stage where like I gotta start preparing for life after this. Correct. So when you get the grays. You know, you're allowed to do whatever you want. That's just my that's my take. You period. mentioned in the streets. Ja, <laughs> period. Ja is in the streets, um, or at least it appears to be so on live. A situation with Ja, I'm I'm not making light of it. It, it sucks because he's a young, he's a he's a young boy in the NBA. Um, uh, I see what you did there, <laughs> and he's <laughs> learning, right? And he's there's certain lumps he has to take, but objectively, this. This is stupid. This got to be the dumbest way to get in trouble with the history that we have of Ja. Am I am I right or am I wrong? Correct. <laughs> so, hundred percent correct. I mean, I, I this is this is why I think about it, man. Because I I initially reacted like, oh, I, we we just told you, and then I felt like, yo, why do I feel like I'm talking to my kids? Because that's exactly the conversation, like. Am I absolutely clear? Yes. And then, like, two weeks later, we just talked about this, right? <laughs> but then I thought about it. Josh's closer in age to my kids than he is to me. This okay. is how young – This it, put it in perspective. This is how young Ja is. Soldier Boy is old-school music for him. Mm, that's he old. was seven years old when Superman that yeah. came out, right? And I, and I do still Google so- Soldier Boy music sometimes. But I'm just saying, like, think about that. He was seven years old. When, that song is like a kid song, yeah. right? Damn near for, for my old ass. But for <laughs> Ja, it's like I, my parents would play it around the house. Mm. Like, think about that. That's like, what his dad is playing when he's uh, he's he's on the grill. Yeah, exactly. On Memorial Day weekend, he's playing Soldier Boy Tell Him. And they're all doing the dance in the backyard. <laughs> uh, him and his little cousins. Soldier <laughs> Boy up in <laughs> So it's just like the idea that, like, 
he's not going to make dumb mistakes. And the uh, like the other thing about it, dumb as it is, he ain't hurt nobody. That that's like that's kind of like it's not like he was so when Steven Jackson talks about this and he's like, you know, I've made mistakes too. Steven Jackson talked about being actively in a shootout <laughs> as an NBA player, getting out there, like, getting hit by a car so hard it knocked his teeth out. Getting yeah. up, pulling the gun out, and ba -da, ba -da, ba -da, ba -da. like that's what he's talking about. Jaws just like dancing with the, the little gun from Harlem Nights. That's that's his big crime. Like holding the Steven small ja Stephen Jackson. Maybe that's how it started for him. Maybe he was just dancing with a little gun at one point and it turned. I'm gonna tell soap. you. Yep. I'm gonna tell you right now. It did not start like that. For <laughs> Stephen Jackson. Which is funny because you have you ever heard Soldier Boy stories? Sometimes ah. they do sound a little like Stephen Jackson stories. Ah. Stephen ah. Jackson ah. might be real. I don't know, but. It, the stories are, I'm just saying, they both was in the streets the same way. I, I'm going to tell you. From, this, from the podcast stories. I, I'm going to tell you right now. I've heard the Steven Jackson stories far beyond. Far, Me too. Far before, far beyond the podcast. What, the podcast yes, though. I, I also have heard the history of uh, Steven Jackson in these streets. So I, I don't think he's wrong. And I don't think John Morant is a bad kid. I, mm -hmm. I, and I think that's the problem everybody has with it is because, like, yo, you're, you're not doing anything but hurting yourself. You know, yeah. and also... You know, it's not like, yes, he's young. 23, I'm trying to put myself back when I was 23. And everybody's situation is different. And no, I didn't have $200 million contract Same either, man. which I, I didn't, you know. I was still on my grind trying to get to it. $10 million for every year you've been alive on the planet. $10 million for every <sighs> every year you've been alive as well. But also, I, I, but it's not like they're saying, like, yo, don't hang out with your friends. Disown your family. Don't forget where you came from. You got to stop talking to people you love or being... It's like, yo, just don't up the strap on the internet. Lay low. That's a very, the, pa the, the partners, the endorsers, they just like, yo, just don't pull out the blicky. <laughs> like, it's a very simple, and, and I feel like you could do that. See, that's what I'm saying. I feel like that's a request that can be met. Oh, I'm great at hiding the strap. <laughs> oh. <no. laughs> the delay on that was tremendous. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, y'all. No, I shouldn't have done that here. Oh, uh, hey, man, this is this is this is what we, this is why you're here, Sid. <laughs> I shouldn't have done that here. <laughs>the NBA lottery was this week and the Spurs got the golden ticket. Mm -hmm. I mean, the San Antonio Spurs. So, very boring, but they get Victor uh Wimbenyama if if they choose sure to go in that direction. Sure. I don't know why they would it, but yeah. it it does seem like we're going to be hearing a lot more about the Spurs and for the next we'll call it at least 10 to 15 years. Will we? If everything works. I don't know, you Did tell me. Did we hear a lot more of them with with Tim Duncan, like, yeah, they were winning and they were successful. We didn't hear much because, yeah. as you said, boring. But I don't think I don't think Tim Duncan, like, there wasn't as much fanfare. And this is a good tipping off point because I think it was Wojo who called Victor Wimbenyama not only the best NBA prospect ever, but maybe the best prospect of the history of team sports. I'm going to tell you right now, that is hyperbole at of the highest level. Man, because cap is what we call that super on journeyman. Cap. Super Hyperbole cap. of the highest level equates. You, you ever seen them, them big baseball hats? It's like, yeah, like yeah, huge, yeah. that's what that was. Big that, cap. That's right. how big cap, big that cap. Was. That's like, that's the whole different type Le of hyperbole. Le LeBron James as a, I want to see a freshman rising to sophomore in high school. Mm -hmm. the, whenever the Lenny Cook game happened, like he was already a household name. Mm. He was on the cover of Sports Illustrated as a junior in high school. Yeah. With the title, The Chosen One. He declares for the draft. He goes number one, and there's a bidding war between the sneaker companies for him, Adidas and Nike. Nike they win. should make a movie about this. They, they will. <laughs> Not sure. <laughs> they will. A hundred million dollars. Hundred million dollars. And by the way, Reebok offered one twenty-five, but they came in too late into the bidding. Mm. There is no like. There's in the history of basketball. There's two guys I would say that had that height: LeBron, mm -hmm. Kareem. Kareem. People knew who Kareem was like as an eighth house. grader. Yeah, right? I remember that. Like, so it, it was, but it no. was a different time. Obviously, there wasn't the internet and all that stuff. So obviously, LeBron was way more widespread. Victor Wembanyama might be the greatest player of all time right now. I don't know. I'm maybe, maybe yeah. he's gonna grow up to be the greatest player of all time. But he's not as height 
as LeBron James because LeBron James was ubiquitous. People who didn't know basketball knew who this dude was. My mom, who does not follow basketball, she's a sports fan, but mm -hmm. does not follow basketball. When I was in 10th grade, I missed curfew by like 10 minutes. She's cussing me the hell out like I just, like I just like shot six people or yes. something, right? Like she's like, are you out of your damn I, mind? I have both I will, received and delivered yes, this speech. She's <laughs> giving it to me for these 10 minutes that I was past curfew. And in the speech, she says, oh, you must think you LeBron James, mm -hmm. huh? You must think you LeBron James. I don't see no Hummer in that parking lot. It, and it was like, that Boom. was the moment. I'm like, damn, LeBron's a big deal. Dude, that's how you know. That's how I that's knew. How I'm you like, know. Black Mama Lecture just referenced LeBron James in the Hummer. It, that's, but that's that's it, right? Like, But um, is that just because it's we're in the United States, though? It's like, it's worldwide dude, when Benyama bigger. If you're calling him the most hype prospect ever. It's got to be. And he's not hyped here. The basketball mecca. Dog, like, I mean, that. That seems to be like a pretty low bar. Hey, the most hype prospect ever. Is he big in the United States? Well, not well, not really. And just some nerds over here on the internet know. Well, then guess what? He's not. My dad watches basketball. Uh -huh. He's a sports fan. He doesn't know who Victor Wembanyama is. I submit to you, a bigger percentage of the population in the United States knew who Tim Duncan was coming out. Yeah. Than than Victor Wembanyama. Yeah. And by, and when Tim Duncan came out, it inspired mass tanking. Across the league, including the Spurs, who, who got him. The most famous Rick Pitino speech. We talk about Larry Bird's not walking through that door. Robert Parrish not walking through that door. Kevin McHale's not walking through that door. That was in reaction to basically Rick Pitino's plan going into Boston was we're going to tank and we're going to draft Tim Duncan number one. And they had the worst record and the ping pong balls got him up out of there. They had like the third or fourth pick, which turned into Chauncey. Immediately, his plans were ruined in yeah. Boston. And so when they reached that point where everyone was like, why aren't we winning championships? He's like, well, because uh, the guy that I was supposed to draft ain't here. Right. He's not here. Victor Wembanyama, for as great he is, like, we didn't get widespread tanking in the league. Like, we got bad teams that were just bad. We didn't get anyone who was, like, pulled the plug on their season for it. Really? Uh, you don't think that there's some teams that were, like... San Antonio, Detroit, and... Uh, uh, what maybe Portland would be Portland the one. Portland would be Portland would be the one that pulled the plug. But like San Antonio, Detroit, Charlotte, they were naturally Houston. Bad. They were bad from they bad the old fashioned way. Yeah, like they they've been bad. It wasn't yeah. even like they decided to be bad this year. They've yeah. been bad for a couple of years. Now you could say, oh, they knew, but like uh, it, to me, it's not quite the same thing, man. Okay, like, and and I think sometimes people conflate like, oh, he's going to be really good. He might be one of the best players to come out in the last 20 years, and that mm -hmm. might be true, but to say one of the most hype prospects ever, like, no, man, like, or the, no. mo or the most, one of the most, fine. The most? No, you can't, you can't. Okay, what do you think about him as a player? I want your basketball, and don't dance around this shit to me. I right. want you to tell me the same way you sat up there in 2016 and you said LeBron is oh, done, man. fam, right? Bring this back. <laughs> All right, I want you to give me your Wimbenyama take. Right. Is he going to be the best? You were wrong on the LeBron one. We the, can both say that. I, right? I don't think, yes, I was wrong on LeBron in 2016, and, yeah. and I atoned for that sin. I'm okay. sorry, LeBron. All right. All right. But, uh, but is he going to be the best? That's such a high bar, man. And I feel for him because it's like, if you what, where do you land if you don't reach that bar? Right? Is Kevin Durant a disappointment? If he's Kevin Durant? If he's seven, like slightly bigger Kevin Durant? Yeah. Is that a disappointment? That's amazing to say, like that yeah. dude. If you say if he can reach what Le Kevin Durant has achieved, that that would be a disappointment. But I feel like that's the box we're painting him into. Mm. As a prospect, he's incredibly unique in that obviously seven three and the incredible wingspan. But he moves very fluidly, like a perimeter player, right? So, in terms of shot making, in terms of like being able to see and make passes and all that, like it's unparalleled. We've never had anything like that with someone who moves like that. I saw uh, last night the Nuggets-Lakers game. Michael Porter Jr. hit a, a three-point in the corner where Austin Reeves like, had perfect technique on the closeout and a hand, a hand in the face, not figuratively, literally. Literally hand, hand in the hand face. In the face. Yep. And, but Michael Porter Jr. just went Ooh, like directionally upwards. And it's like, yeah, I'm 6'10", and you're 6'6". Six, six. At some point, it doesn't matter what Science. you do. Science kicked Science. in. <laughs> exactly. yep. Science kicked in. Now, add... Five was it five inches? Yeah. To that five to five to six. That that's like an insane amount of thing. Now, what are the concerns? Number one, 
His body. Health, yep. Before we even get to health, okay. just his body, right? Like, I remember Brandon Ingram, who's 6'11", and also similarly skinny, struggled his first couple of years in the league because he literally did not have the physical strength to fight around, like, when you go over a screen, for instance, if you're if you're an offensive player, they set the screen for you, you want to curl, they tell you go shoulder to shoulder, right? Mm -hmm. But what happens is if you your defender is savvy, they just touch you on the hip. And if you aren't stout, strong, yeah, core strength, you with just that. You're, you, yep. you're going wide, and when you go wide around the screen, now it's not quite as effective as, as a screen, right? wembenyama has got a lot of those body issues as well going in. Then it's like, okay... What's the history of people 7-2 plus in this league? They all get hurt. A lot. Yeah. A lot. All of them, right? El Gaskis, Yao Ming, George Mirazan, Manu Bo, uh, Sean Bradley. Like, the, uh, what's my man, Dan? Boban might be the only one, and he doesn't play. Boban, Boban is low management right, like throughout his career. Natural, natural, natural load management. management. So you're not asking them. To cut, move laterally, cross people over. Step back, trade. Yeah, like that. Follow. Dude, that's all sorts of pressures on the ligaments and, and the tendons and stuff like that. Again, I'm not predicting. I'm just saying, like, yeah. we have a case history. So a case like, history. So you don't feel great about him. If the bar is he's going to be the greatest ever, you don't feel great about making that declaration right now. Uh, about making that declaration? No. About taking number one, I feel very confident. Obviously, like, yes. You, taking number yeah. one. But like you know, like I feel like LeBron is kind of one of those players. Now he wasn't the same issues as far as like body mm -hmm. or health or but he was a player we had never seen before. And a lot of the knocks where they said he was it was going to be tough for him to stand up to. A he's one of the players that got even better over his mm -hmm. NBA career, which is rare. But also he did sustain at that size, moving that way and playing positions in the way he did it in a way we never seen before. So if Wimbenyama. Maybe he's the one. Maybe he's the one so, to break some of these things. LeBron. Okay, so let's run through like LeBron as a prospect. Number one, physically, he was ready. He walked in with a man's body, and, and yes. it's funny when you look at it now, like 2003 LeBron. Like, oh, he looked like a kid, but like, dude, that's not a kid. That's not a kid. That, that is a, that, that is a, especially by NBA standards in that time because weight training isn't what it is now. What it was 20 years ago. Right. So he was already like he was he was NBA, his body was NBA, NBA ready, ready. Yep. like that's that it wasn't like well when his body matures like it's mature right now right. right number two LeBron was not like in the in the red zone in the red zone in terms of injury risk right there were other six seven six eight guys in the league who played a perimeter style Tracy McGrady. Kobe Bryant, right? Like there, there were there were other guys in the league his size that were doing things. Now he was bouncier than them, quicker than yeah. them. And I'm not saying I'm not saying his body was well, the issue. I, I'm just you know like and then you, the the I'm saying the body is most of it because we take that and then you say this is one of the least injured stars in the history yeah. of, of the league. Like when you take into account the 20 years of his, you know, obviously now in the last four years he's had a lot more injuries, but like. He never got hurt in Cleveland. No, no. He never and, got hurt. And that's not one-to-one. -one. I would say the, 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 the questions that we had about LeBron or people that people that raised about LeBron was that he was such a physical specimen, but his skill level wasn't his, there. His, and, and, like, what happens when he loses his bounce? What happens yeah. when he uses, loses his speed? And his skill only got better, so, and we hadn't seen that before. So I'm, I'm going to tell you the difference, right, is LeBron shooting-wise wasn't skilled. Dribbling-wise is probably okay. But – his IQ was through the roof. Next and level. you could tell that immediately. Yep. He was a great passer. From the start. From yep. the very beginning, from the, his first day on the court. And so from that regard, even as he got older, even if he never got better as a shot, we all said the same thing. You know what's going to happen when he's, we saw when he was 35. Mm -hmm. It was silly us. He's like, he'll be Carl Malone. He'll be just out the, at the post and mm -hmm. throwing backdoor passes and all that stuff. And 20 years later, he's still doing, he's still doing, doing LeBron stuff. He's still doing the same stuff, stuff yeah. he was doing his first year. All right, last part of this conversation. Seeing pictures of Wimanyama in a Spurs jersey when he's a kid. Yep. He said his family was hoping for that. The people of, Fr of France were hoping for that. You're an NBA guy, man. Is this? I'm not just an NBA guy. I am the host of Basketball you Illuminati. You are the host of a Basketball Illuminati. What does the uh, Basketball Illuminati say? Uh, so all I'm going to say is, you know what team he played for? Well, let's just say the owner was this guy named... Tony Parker. Mm. <laughs> That's it for Journeyman this week. Shout out to Metal Arc Media. Shout out to Amin El Hassan and Sydney Colson for joining us today. Make sure you journey back same time next week. Superman that hoe. Yeah.